Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. In my last blog and video, I showed you how we can take a ClickSense app as well as app automation to create a personalized email message to a list of customers. In this case here, I'll just show you a quick example, but you could refer to the video for more detail. We have a list of customers and their orders, and I just want to click the send button, which is going to trigger an app automation to send a personalized email that we set up based off of that data in that straight table. We go to our inbox and just click refresh. And then you can see we have an email. Hello, Sam Jones. Thank you for your purchase. This is the field when the order was paid. Here's the field where the order should ship. And here is the reference to the order number. Okay, that was an on-demand utilizing a trigger for the start block and then utilizing a URL that you see here and sending that as part of the payload that goes over the wire when we click send in the ClickSense app. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is not using ClickSense, but using app automation and how we could loop through that data to send the same email notification to all the customers. So to get started, let's create a new app automation. I'm just gonna to go to my main hub, click add new and select new automation going to give it a name and we're going to call this one customer message loop and click save. Now this time for the start block we'll leave it as manual but we can also kick it off as scheduled or triggered or even utilizing a webhook. To make this fairly simple we're going to search for the ability to connect to Dropbox. So I just type in drop and you can see our connectors for Dropbox. And then in this case here, what we're going to do is just open a file from Dropbox. So in this case here, I'm going to select open file, connect it to my start block. Now I already set up the connector for Dropbox. In this case here, you can see the connection information has been set up, but it's a fairly simple process. You just follow the on-screen prompts to set up that connection. Okay, now for the path on Dropbox, in this case here, I have a path that has test data. And just to see what the test data looks like, it's very similar to the test data that was in that sample. And you can see it's comma separated value. Now, the next thing we want to do is read that file from Dropbox. So we're going to go back to our list of blocks and I'm going to type in read. And you can see read data from a file. And then we choose the same path that's used within the path property of the Dropbox file con uh, connector. And you can see it automatically populates it. Mode is set to automatic, CSV or JSON. In this case, it's CSV. File encoding, use first rows as headers. Yes, so pretty much all the default settings here. Okay, now for this structure right here, it's going to perform a loop for every record encounters within the CSV file. So before we do anything, we can just do a test run to see what records are coming back by looking at the history. And you can see at this point here, it has sales record number, order number, buyer username. So it's reading all of those fields from the header record and the appropriate data. So now we're gonna just use this to populate that particular email. Okay, now in this case, they all have the same email address for testing purposes. Now off screen, I have a block already configured. So I'm just gonna paste that block and connect it. And we're just gonna verify these settings. And what you can do here is just click the drop down box and you can select item in, read data from file on Dropbox. And then from this list, you can now choose your fields. In this case, we're going to choose the buyer email. Subject test. We'll call this customer message loop. And then we have our hello information in here. Now you saw me do this in more detail in the last video. I'm just going to give you a, a more brief version here. And we'll say hello by your name. Thanks for your purchase. We'll say order num. Paid. Sh 
ship. And status. And that's all we need to do. Now I'm going to click run for this argument right now. And we're going to see this populate. And there's the records that are coming in. 1, 2, and 3, 4.35 p.m., all at the same timestamp. Mark Smith, Mike Tarallo, Sam Jones. And you can see, thanks for your purchase. There's your order number. So what we've done is instead of using the Click Cloud Services block to read the data from a straight tail, we've actually just read in the data from a CSV file and then processed that with the read data from a file block to actually now create a message loop utilizing the send mail providing dynamic field values in each message. Now one little quick, I'll give you a nice little extra thing that we can do here. So we created this app automation and we called this app automation customer message loop. Well, let's go to our block, our um, ClickSense app and just show you, we also have the ability to call the app automation directly from a button as an action. So let me go to my charts, grab the button, make a nice big large button right there. Go to general, we'll call this one send loop message. And then under actions and navigation, if we click add action from the drop down, you will see a new value, execute automation. And then you'll be able to choose your automation. And we should have our customer message loop automation. And there it is. Done editing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button. Actually, let's uh, clean up our inbox. I always like to show things fresh. And I'm going to click send loop message. And then go to the inbox and click refresh. And there's our three messages. So not only can we trigger it directly from app automation, scheduled, webhooks, manual, etc., but we can also use a button within ClickSense to kick it off as well. And as you saw in the previous blog, we could also click um, a hyperlink and call the URL um, as well to kick off the automation. Okay, guys, that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed this one. I always enjoy coming up with new ideas. If you have some other types of use cases that you'd like to share, let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, see you on the next video. Take care.